Oh. <laughs> I just love the look of glistening green grass. You know the green I'm talking about. <laughs> Moist with sprinkler water, reflecting the radiance of the sun. In that regard, Louisiana's grass is in a class of its own. <laughs> just picture it. On a clear summer day, a cold beer in one hand, gazing out from your porch onto the garden you're so proud of. This is the life. Doesn't get much better than this. That's how you feel. A well-kept garden and a cold beer be open in combination. They go hand in hand, just like hot dogs and sporting events. But that grass... It's, it's got, got a, bit a bit of a nerve, nerve to it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter how many times, times you cut it down. It'll, it'll always keep coming back, back and turn your eyes away for a bit. <laughs> and, that's and that's when it'll really sprout. Up, up until last week, week your, your garden, garden was, was perfectly pruned, pruned and balanced, symmetrical and pristine. But, but you, you wake, wake up, up the next morning, morning and you can't even stand to look at what it's become. That's, That's why, why people work so hard to cut their grass. Like, like it's some ordeal they've, they've been tasked with by the big man in the sky. sky. Oh. <laughs> and, and it, it never, never ends. ends. Understand, Understand me, Zach. If you, you want to stop, stop cutting your grass, now, you need to either submit to its growth or force it to wither. That's, That's all humans can really do. Hard work never really gets us anywhere in the big picture. Nothing but wasted efforts. You following me here? Now just be honest with yourself. Be honest, Francis Zach Morgan. Oh, howdy, Zach. So we meet again. Such a touching reunion. Like a little boy who was given up for adoption, finally reuniting with his true parents. Uh, look, even little Willie here is beside himself with joy. Kason! Oh, dear. Damn it! I'm gonna kill you! Hey, let her go! What the hell's gotten into you? Jeez, are you okay? <laughs> that should do it. <sighs> Well, no turning back now. How should we clean this up? I'm searching the room. Why did you come here, Aaliyah? Remember the real reason you decided to investigate Morgan's house in the first place? We came here to find a missing girl. Come on, Agent Jones. I know you're hiding something. Uh, what are you talking about? You've been watching him for four and a half years, haven't you? Can you really stand here and tell me that you never saw a single one of the strange signs I'm picking up on now? 
uh, what signs? Deadly premonitions, preparations for kidnapping or terrorist activities, sexual depravity, violent tendencies, self-mutilation, or even just contacting a specific person periodically. Nope, nada. He doesn't fit any of that. You think I'd really ignore something that obvious? I may be a schlub, but I'm still an FBI agent. Then why didn't you do anything about this room? Or did you merely choose to ignore his abnormal proclivities? You want to know what I did? I did my damn job! End of story! I was outside the entire time. How do you expect me to notice a room like this from out there? It's as simple as that. At least it was, until you dragged me into this whole mess. Don't blame me just because your big investigation ended up leading nowhere. Then tell me the truth. After seeing this room, can you really say that man is in his right mind? He kept this room a total secret from you for over four and a half years. No normal human is capable of such a feat. Only a true genius. Or a true monster. Can you really guarantee that he won't try anything if we just let him go here? Well, uh... Then you need to help me. Find some sort of evidence that we can use to make him reveal what he's plotting. Okay, okay. Why do you think Jethro here survived? Why? I mean, doesn't he look like the kind of guy who'd die first in a horror movie? He married into the Clarkson family. He didn't possess Clarkson blood, so he had nothing to do with Helena Doman's plan. The blood purge thing? But if that was all there was to it, then Helena Doman wouldn't have killed anyone but Clarkson's, right? Yet a ton of the Clarkson gang members died, along with Sheriff Woods. <sighs> Doesn't add up. She did whatever it took to achieve her goals. She'd kill if the plan required it. But killing people outside of the Clarkson family was never a priority. Her ultimate goal was to cut off the Clarkson bloodline. Maybe he was always meant to be an assistant to the goddess of fertility. What, like a servant? He was the kind of person who was most in his element when he had someone to serve. Even afterwards, he let Patricia take over the estate, while he became her assistant. As soon as he settled into his role, the townspeople started to respect him. Now they practically revere him, and he's even earned himself a nickname, One-Armed Danny. So you think his life played out exactly the way Professor R planned it to go? Talk about tragic. I was so positive. But she isn't here. There is something about this room, though. Agent Jones, what do you think? Uh, me? I'm not as smart as you. Why are you even asking me? Are you hiding something? <laughs> of course not. Knock it off. Me? Hiding something? Ha! <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Come on. I got nothing to hide. <sighs> I thought I would find answers in this room. I thought that Patricia would be here, but I was wrong. This room is only filled with photos of people related to the case and the handiwork of a madman. Feels like I'm wandering through a heavy mist. Why is Morgan showcasing those women's photos? And that bed? The one who took her in after the incident was Daniel Clarkson. The next in line to succeed the Clarkson family. He's the one that ended up raising her from that point onwards. Isn't fate strange? 
In the end, two people who were completely unrelated by blood ended up inheriting that house. Yeah, you're right. But sometimes I wonder, what is family anyway? Go back far enough, we're all strangers to one another. We're talking countless generations, marriages and birth, you know. Humans love to deify the rules they create. It's almost like that's been an unwritten law from the very start. If you loved someone from the bottom of your heart, would you ever be able to marry someone else? Or kill for them? Whoa, uh, what are we talking about? I never heard of any kind of motive like that in any other murder case. I just keep feeling like we're being fed a story that he made up in his mind. <sighs> True. Honestly, without having experienced what that's like, I can't really say what I'd do. But I'd never try and force love to happen, if it didn't seem like it was meant to be. There are 3.5 billion women on this planet. There's got to be more than one specific person who anyone can fall deeply in love with, right? But what if we were talking about pizza, not women? You just discovered the perfect ultimate pizza, but you aren't allowed to take even a single bite unless you kill someone for the cook. Have you ever loved someone with all your heart? <laughs> what kind of person do you take me for? That's my line. Why did Lise have to die first? What is this? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. This room paints such a bizarre picture. But upon closer look, I can see some strange sort of pattern to it all. Was Morgan trying to recreate something with all this? If so... There must be a reason for all of these weird and hideous things. What's that? A hunting trophy of brown bear with a dragonfly eye patch. Why is it smoking a cigar? It's probably supposed to represent Philip J. Clarkson's body. And the elk is... Helena Doman. So that's why it's got such good taste in fashion. And this one is Galena Clarkson? Why did he want to line up corpses that were killed in different places, all together in a single room? Red seeds? When Helena Doman returned home, someone must have let her inside. You think that was her brother-in-law, Daniel? I don't know. <sighs> well, Alligators did chomp his arm off. He probably had it in for old man PJ, too. But... You know, I don't think he had anything to do with this. Why not? You're making it out to be more complicated than it really is. 
That's always the problem with people like you. Too smart for your own good. Just get to the point. <sighs> Professor R marched straight through the front door to the mansion. She arrived right at her destination using the quickest route possible without having to undergo a single security check. I know. My question is, how was she able to do that? Because she's family. It doesn't matter if PJ disowned her. He never stopped loving his son. A father would never abandon his child, no matter how much they failed to fulfill his expectations. That's what being a parent is all about. Don't look at me like that. I know, I know, I don't have a son myself, but I have a father. He's still back in my hometown, managing the printing plant my grandfather started. He'll be turning 80 soon. He wanted me to take over the place, but as you can see, I'm out here. But I know how this whole thing works. Even though I haven't seen him in forever, the minute I go home, he'll welcome me with warm, open arms. Galena Clarkson went to California to become an actress, but things never took off for her, so she eventually returned home. Then she murdered her own daughter and ended up like this. Where did she go wrong? She did manage to appear in a few movies, right? Not as any characters with actual names, and never with much clothes on. So that's the only value they saw in her, huh? Sorry, that was insensitive. It's an everyday occurrence in that world. She was also bullied a lot. Bullied? How? They'd cut up her costumes, her scripts, and even her own clothes, everywhere she went. Then after three years of that, her stylist chopped off a chunk of her hair, by accident. Are you kidding me? I did a little investigating on this. In the end, a self-titled Big Cheese producer tricked her. She almost ended up going into porn. <sighs> Not hard to imagine what would have happened after that. One witness said that after returning to Lou Carre, she refused to use scissors to cut anything. Uh, uh, you sure it's okay to press that? Won't know until we try. Hey, hey, it's Woodstock. Look, a peace sign. Love and peace, man. Even I can figure out what this is from. It's Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Grateful Dead, and Led Zeppelin. But I shouldn't have to explain it to a music nut like you, right? That isn't a peace mark. It's upside down. You don't need to be a music nut to see that. Wh who says that's the top part? If you're looking from Lisa's head, this is the top part, making it a big, fat peace mark. No, this is the ground. Where's your proof? The red seeds. Seeds go in the ground, right? That makes this wall the bottom. Lisa's head is clearly at the top. Period. <sighs> also... Agent Jones. Led Zeppelin never played at Woodstock. He's representing a human with a hunting trophy made from an animal. I feel like I'm looking at a piece of modern art done in really bad taste. She planned a string of murders all in order to restore the Clarksons to their former glory, right? Yeah. According to Morgan's story. Matches up with the files, too. But the only proof of that is the confession she privately gave to Morgan just before she died. Galena Clarkson was also murdered immediately after she confessed. Don't you think it's all a little too convenient? 
Well, story-wise, yeah. And the sacrifices. None of the FBI's official records contain an example of an actual human sacrifice. Aside from the cases that Francis Zack Morgan handled, that is. There are tons of examples of animal sacrifice, though. And remember the witch hunts back in the Middle Ages? Meaning? Meaning there are always exceptions to the rule. And Morgan alluded to the existence of some sort of journal, right? I think he said he read it in Professor R's lab. If we could find that, maybe this would all become easier to swallow. The report didn't mention anything about a journal. And if it truly did exist, it surely would have been submitted as evidence. Unless he tried to cover it up on purpose. Or... Unless the journal never existed in the first place. Exactly. <sighs> he was taught how to rule as a child, never confided in anyone, and married for purely political reasons. Then he prospered so much that he became powerful enough to rule an entire town on his own. But in the end, his own child betrayed him and ended his entire clan in a series of violent deaths. If that was your life, how would you look back on it? Yeah, beats me. I wasn't born into a rich family, nor was I ever taught how to rule. And for what it's worth, I've also never knocked up a young ex-actress. But I guess the one thing we can say is that any good life needs balance. Get too hung up on one thing and you lose sight of everything else. And if you betray someone, you'll get betrayed too. Someone thinks they can step all over people and then live out the rest of their life in peace. They're fooling themselves. We always get to see how those people end up in our line of work. In the end, they die horrible deaths. That is why pizza is the only thing I trust. Pizza never betrays you. This case of press of authority, cross-purposes, madness, and love. But Katrina took the truth along with many innocent lives and buried it all at the bottom of the swamp. But there's one truth that can never be washed away. This all started with the death of a young girl. Why did she believe what Professor R told her? The whole blood purge story. There's no way anyone in their right mind would ever believe that. You got a point. No matter how badly all the bullying must have broken her heart, I just find it too hard to believe. Don't you? Yeah. But you shouldn't think too hard about it. Why not? Human beings don't make sense. We always do things that can't be explained with common logic, especially when it concerns our parents, children, and siblings. Mm, mm That doesn't satisfy me. No matter how irrational an action may be, I want to know exactly why that person made such an irrational decision. Otherwise, what hope do we have? You're never going to be in a situation where everything makes perfect sense. Just stop sticking your nose so deeply into everything. That's my advice, as an old guy who's lived twice as long as you. You and I are nothing alike. You decided to give up on your life and spend the rest of your time on Earth sitting around and playing Sudoku. <sighs> Everyone thinks that the principal thing to the tree is the fruit. But in point of fact, the principal thing to it is the seed. Now I know why Lise Clarkson was murdered first. Lise's death was Professor R having second thoughts. According to Morgan, her plan was to perform parricide and filicide, then commit suicide. Those were the three deaths necessary to complete the ritual, remember? Which means she technically could have killed Patricia first. 
That would have been the best way to delay any interference from the Clarksons themselves. The reason she didn't kill Patricia first is because Lena was actually following a different plan inside her own mind, or perhaps she merely changed her plan as she followed through with it. At some point, new emotion started to take root within her. She had second thoughts about something. And in order to shake those off, she used Galena to kill Lise first. In order to cut off any possible escape, but that only made her plan move ahead quicker than she could have ever imagined, which forced her to rush right up to the end with those misgivings always in the back of her mind. Huh? Wait, hold on. Yeah, you lost me. What are you talking about? In other words, at some point, Helena Doman decided that she wanted to make Patricia the next heir. The blood purge wasn't for the goddess of fertility. It was for their daughter, Patricia. Wait, are you saying Helena knew from the start that Sheriff Woods would die with Candy? That's the only explanation I can think of. Huh. Remember, this is only assuming that everything Morgan told us was true. Until I can trust that man, this is all nothing more than conjecture. Uh, considering how insane this all is, it sounds perfectly believable to me. Whoa, 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 whoa.